Welcome to App Design Tips. My name is Caleb and I'm going to show you the top 10 Adobe XD features I use in 2019. We're going to kick things off with Repeat Grid and I have an article called Six Creative Ways to Use Repeat Grid and it'll show you a few different ways that I use it, but for now I want to show you one of the creative ways that I use Repeat Grid. If I need to design a bar graph, for example, I can click on Repeat Grid and I can get my sizes and padding and everything set just the way that I want it. And once I have something that I like, including the radius, then I can ungroup this Repeat Grid and now I can set this bar graph with different heights. And this saves me a lot of time when designing. Next up we have symbol replacement. So if you have hundreds of artboards with symbols that you want to replace later on, you can simply go into your assets panel, find that icon that you want to replace and just hover your mouse over the other symbol and you can see now that it's replaced and all the artboards for that symbol appeared. While we're on the subject of symbols, let's talk about the next feature and this is linked symbols. Real quick, for those of you that are new to my channel, if you want to see more tutorials and videos like this, go ahead and hit subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified of future videos. Also, if you want to learn Adobe XD in a course from top to bottom, I have a link in the description below that will give you a huge discount on my full tutorial. So if you have a style guide in one Adobe XD document, you can simply grab any of these symbols from this style guide, go ahead and copy this, and you can paste this into any different project. And you see here when it's pasted, there's a little link icon showing you that this is going to be linked from that document. Now you can always right click and unlink this symbol, or if you want to edit the source in the document, you can click on edit source and document. It's going to switch back over to that document and we can come over here. Let's say we want to make this color a little bit more orange. So let's add an orange color here. And as soon as we do that and hit save, we can jump back over into our document. <clears throat> we can see that this icon is now blue. And that's to tell us that there are some updates. So if we come into the assets panel, it tells us that there's a few updates. And when we hover over this blue icon, we're going to see what that update looks like. And if we want to accept that change, we can click and now that's updated. And that's linked symbols. Next in the list, we have plugin support. And I have a video showcasing the top 10 plugins for 2019. So go ahead and look for that in the description below. Basically, third party plugin support allows developers to open up a world of features as they see fit for their different programs. For example, we have app icon generators, we have plugins to allow us to add pictures, and many more. So like I said, I have a video, go ahead and check that out if you're more interested in plugins. Now let's take a look at responsive resize. So I have an artboard here, and if I try to resize this right now, you can see that nothing is responsive and everything is static. So if I click on responsive resize right here, before I even set any constraints or any settings with this, it's going to automatically detect some of these behaviors and relationships. So now I can go ahead and resize this and you can see it's doing a really good job. And if there are a few things off, I can come in here, select different elements and I can choose to have a manual constraint. So I can pin this to the top right, move this over here. And once I do that, it's going to obey my manual constraints. So that's responsive resize. These next features have to do with prototyping and I'm going to show you voice control and voice playback for voice prototyping. Here I have an Alexa template that you can download from Adobe XD's website. And if we look at this template here, this is for the Amazon Echo. And to prototype for voice, we're in prototype mode here. And we can click on any element like this text, for example. And if we click on the beginning of this drag handle, we can see that the trigger is voice. So as soon as we set that to voice, we can type in what we want the voice to say. So Alexa open world travel guide. And then as soon as we say that, it's going to transition to this artboard. And now we want Alexa to talk back to us. So if we click on this artboard, we can see this little lightning bolt icon here showing that this trigger is going to be a timed trigger, which is zero seconds. And the action that we want, instead of transitioning to an artboard, we're going to choose a speech playback. And this is going to say, welcome to World Travel Guide. You can learn more about Cuba. Uh, you can type in anything you want and the computer will speak it. Now we can click on this text and we can say, Alexa, tell me more about Cuba. But we can also map up these texts. So pyramids in New Mexico, for example, if I click on this, if you say, tell me more about the pyramids or tell me more about Cubbon Park, we can change that here. So we have these three boxes linked to these three artboards. 
with voice trigger. So let's check this out. I'm gonna to go to Echo Show Home. When I click play, if I hold down the space bar now, I can say, Alexa, open World Travel Guide. Welcome to World Travel Guide. You can learn more about Cuba, pyramids in Mexico, or Cub and Park. What would you like to hear more about? Okay, and then I can say, Alexa, tell me more about Cuba, but I can also say, Alexa, tell me more about the pyramids in Mexico because we have this linked up. So I'm gonna hold down the space bar. Alexa, tell me more about the pyramids in Mexico. Learn about the pyramids in Mexico, including the Moon Plaza, the Sun Pyramid, and the Palace of Quetzalcoatl. And that's a short demo of voice triggers and voice playback. Next in Adobe XD, I wanna show you the drag trigger for prototyping. And to show you how this works, I'm going to duplicate this artboard here. And we have this grouped element that I wanna push over here to the left. And as soon as I do that, when I drag my finger over here, it's going to animate this from left to right. So to show you how that works, I'm going to click on prototype. And first we have to link this up. So I'm gonna link this here with the drag trigger. And I want it to auto animate. And same thing over here. I'm gonna link this element to this artboard and we have the same settings. So now we can select this artboard, hit play. And we can see that that drag works perfectly back and forth. Now there are even more creative ways you can use this feature and I want to show you this using some of Pablo Stanley's characters and you can download this template. It's called Humans with three A's. You can download this template and he has a series of characters that you can use in your design. But we have just a few layers. We have this plant layer, we have this lady and this man and all we have to do is click on this artboard. We're going to duplicate this artboard and now in this artboard if I move this, I wanna make this animate from over to the left here. And then I wanna move this guy in a little bit closer right here. When I do that, I can even double click in this group and I'm going to select both of these elements. I'm gonna tilt him a little bit forward like so. Something more like this. And then I'm gonna bring her in just a little bit then I can grab a few elements here, move this over, and let's move her head, tilt it just a little bit more forward so that their heads are touching. So now we have those two states and we wanna auto animate this. So we can click on this artboard, go into prototyping, and I wanna bring this over here with a drag trigger to auto animate. Same thing over here, once I drag this, I want it to auto animate here. And let's go ahead and click play. I can simply drag this from left to right and anything animates however I set it when I drag left and right. So you can have some really unique custom animations this way. Now showing you the drag trigger, I also showed you auto animate. You can animate a series of things by creating one artboard, duplicating it and resizing and repositioning things. It will automatically animate back and forth. So that's the next feature. And to show you more about auto animate, if you design an artboard and you duplicate that artboard and change some things, it's going to auto animate from one artboard to the other, depending on where you reposition or resize elements. And I wanna show you that here with this dashboard. If I duplicate this dashboard, we can see that if we move anything, for example, if I move this just over here to the left, and let's link up the auto animate by just dragging this over to the right, tap auto animates, and we're gonna give this three seconds just so you can see this a little bit clearly. And we're going to drag this wire over here and we're gonna set the same thing. So just to show you how auto animate works, if I click this, it's going to automate from the right to the left and back. So that's how it works. And I'm going to bring this back here. But auto animate is much more powerful than this. For example, we have some lines here that are vector controls. And because I duplicated these over here, all I have to do is go in here. If I double click, I can select these nodes and resize these however I want. And this works with any type of vector. So if I resize these, change the curvature, something like this, uh, change this around, let's go down here. Once I make these changes, I can go back into playing my prototype. And now if I click on this, you can see that those vectors are also auto animating.
The last two features I want to talk about are fixed positions when scrolling for elements and also element overlays in your prototype. So to show you this, I have an artboard here. If I click on this artboard and hit play in the prototype, we can see if we scroll this up and down, we might want this to be fixed on the top and tonight's song and this microphone to be fixed on the bottom. And right now it doesn't show up that way. So let's go ahead and change this. If we click on this first, we can set the vertical viewport height. It's set to 812 right now, which is iPhone 10. And so now if we select these elements, we can bring these to sit right above that viewport height. And we want to turn on fixed position when scrolling. And now this is always going to sit at the bottom. Same thing with this top bar, fixed position when scrolling. And now when we scroll this back and forth, you can see everything hides underneath these elements and these elements stay put. And that's fixed position. Now for overlays, let's go ahead and move this over here. I have a pop-up that I want to pop up when you click any of these buttons. So now if I click on this button, for example, I go over to prototype, I can drag this over here to this artboard. But instead of transitioning, I want to set this to be tap and the action I want to be overlay. And with this overlay, it's going to show me an example of where this is going to be overlaid. And I like this to be probably somewhere in the middle. So I can overlay there and let's click back on these settings. And we can set this animation to dissolve or slide up. Let's try slide up here. And then we can set this ease in, ease out. We can set it to snap or wind up. I'm going to set a snap just to see what that looks like. And I like to put three seconds just to see how dramatic that looks. Let's go back into this artboard. And now we can click on this icon and we can see that springing up. And we can always click away and that's going to reverse. And that's how overlays work. That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos.